Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds. In this video, we're going to show you when maybe you should start sugar syrup feeding. This has a lot of variables to it, so we're going to have to paint a little bit of a broad picture here, but you probably can start feeding if you're in Tennessee like I am. I've been doing it for many weeks, and there's a lot of things in beekeeping that you can do that a lot of people say that you can't. You can't feed now. You can't get in your hives at this temperature. You can't feed pollen patties in Tennessee. I've heard all of those things, and you know what? Instead of listening to the people who say you can't, I choose to listen to the people who do and can. And obviously there are some things that you just cannot do. But this is one thing that we can do. And it is the 7th of March. We have been feeding for a long time, but there's a lot of variables to this. And there's different feeders that impact. Will the feed be taken in? Will the bees drown? Lots of variables here. So let's tackle them. I'm going to show you two colonies in this video. This is a champ, and I'm going to show you one that's a nice little colony, but you can't feed it the same way, or you're going to have some issues. All right. So what we're looking for temperature-wise to start feeding is highs that are getting close to 50s on a pretty consistent basis. Let's say you have a 10-day forecast, and you're going to be up to 49, 52 on average as a high every day. Maybe you're going to have one day it drops down to 40 amongst that. I'm going to feed during that if I need to. Now, if I don't need to, I'm not going to, but you can. And I'm still dropping down 29 degrees, freezing temperatures constantly, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's the kind of variables that I'm looking for right there when it comes to feeding. Keep in mind, I'm a huge proponent of making sure that you feed your bees if they need it in September and October here in Tennessee. So they have plenty to go through winter. When I say that we're feeding, we're not going through and feeding our entire yards right now. We're spot feeding. In a yard of 40 colonies, there might be three or four that look really light. We try to do a really good job in fall, so we're not having to do a lot of crazy feeding early in the season. However, there's another advantage to feeding um, all the colonies here in just a little bit. is just to run a little bit of syrup through them and, and clean their guts out. Sugar syrup can be really good for that. Um, gives kind of a nectar effect. A lot of people are like, oh, sugar syrup so unnatural. We feed it because it's actually the closest thing we can mimic to the real thing. That's why we do it. And it does a good job of it, especially if it's cane sugar or beet sugar. Cane sugar being the better of the two, in my opinion. But those are both sucrose. Feed them. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. And on big colonies like this one right here, you don't have to even put on weight. If you're just wanting to clean their system out, stimulate them a little bit, there's a lot of bees in this box, and they're going to eat it fast. All right, let's check them out. I already popped them a little bit, but look at all of those bees right there. And there's a bunch more in the bottom box. This is a great-looking colony here in early March. And what you think of it is, we're a little bit behind. It's been a little cool. It's starting to catch back up. Now, you can see maybe down in there, the bees are working that frame feeder. Now, typically, a colony this size would have already cleared that frame feeder within 24 hours. However, the syrup has gotten cool of a night. It's, it's harder for them to be able to get it as quick. That syrup cools down, and that's where you can run into issues on small colonies. I don't recommend using frame feeders on small colonies. On big colonies like this, they can basically handle anything. But they've just been working on that. They're taking it in. It's very thin. It's actually, that stuff's a little bit thinner than one to one. I'm not trying to put on weight on this colony. I'm just trying to stimulate them just a little bit and keep them going forward. They're looking really good. Let's check down here and just see what we have to work with. Big colonies like this can take feed in February in Tennessee. So we got a pretty good bit of bees over here. They've really eaten that patty. So. You were looking at about four and a half frames of bees down in there. And we're looking at probably about, I'd say 11 to 12 frames of bee coverage. There's a bunch of brood in this hive. They are gonna be off to the races soon. So they're looking great. You can feed colonies like this with a frame feeder. You can feed them with a bucket feeder like this right here. Um, but what about the little ones? We'll show you that here in just one second. Now, for those of you who are in really northern areas and you experience, you know, just feet of snow and ice and, you know, below zero temps, you all might experience what's called a, a Chinook. 
and there might be other terms for it I have no idea but basically you get a warm spell come through and you get some really warm days melt the snow off just because you get that tiny warm spell if you're gonna be dropping back down to really extreme cold temperatures you're gonna have to talk to a local expert I don't really know what you know Dakota and Vermont and can't Canadian beekeepers deal with but I do know some beekeepers up there are feeding sugar syrup with some snow on the ground I've seen Ian do it seen other guys up there do it so there's variables learn from those guys if you're in those locations though I'm just kind of giving a general overview here so in Tennessee Alabama Kentucky you know even southern Indiana you might put it a couple weeks behind me but you can you can feed in these temperatures today's high was a uh, 58 56 somewhere like that so this is a better feeder and so is this one for winter feeding you can uh, use a lid that's got a hole in it or you can use an inner cover that's got um, a hole in it a lot of them come that way where you can feed through them warm the syrup beforehand and the nice thing about this system is if you put it right on top of the cluster which the bee should be about up in the top of the top box this time of the year the bees warmth I mean there's just heat radiating out, radiating out of this colony and they're gonna warm some of that syrup up and they're gonna be able to take it a lot better the issues you have with the frame feeders if there's not a whole lot of bees let's say we only have like a four frame cluster three frames something like that they can't go they can't heat that syrup up and it's really cold and that's where you get drowning bees sometimes in your frame feeders is the syrup gets really cold or it's really thick syrup like honey thickness like pro sweet or something like that or the bees are sickly if they fall in there and their body temperature drops rapidly and it drops down to 30 or 40 degrees and you know that, that bee's gonna ha not be able to get out of that syrup so I recommend if you're not familiar with this kind of feeding this time of the year using a quart jar inverted or using a bucket inverted we just have a couple one eighth of an inch holes drilled into this bucket and you'll want to have like a little catch basin probably because a certain degree of it will pour out until a vacuum is created and you know this is a two gallon bucket so that's that's quite a large volume but these can work let's get into a smaller colony and show you what I'm talking about when it comes to the little guys all right so we're over here at a little colony we've got two out of the three that survived winter we're gonna go for this one on this side so it's just, uh, since it's a lot easier to access and we're just going to we had this insulated board on top we're just going to pull this side back right here and we're just going to leave a little bit of weight we're gonna go ahead and feed this colony we were feeding them into November a little bit and they look light not very large we were just trying to overwinter some extra queens that we had and see how well it worked I definitely prefer bigger hives going into winter let's let's see what we have to work with right here yeah there's a little bit of honey right over here not a whole lot not a whole lot of bees either But look at them they're, they're trying to make a go of it not a whole lot of bees at all there's the queen right there in the center definitely not as big as they went into winter they just shrank back a whole lot but i think with um, them warming each other up you know all together there might be one frame of bees in here it's not really that hot they don't have a lot of feed though a little bit more on the other frame so we're just going to try to give them a little bit of feed now obviously you can have colonies that are bigger than this you know four frames of bees you gotta watch it with those frame feeders really if you're wanting this is just my opinion but if you're wanting the best feeder for not drowning bees you're wanting the the best way to not have to worry about Oh, just of the bees being able to get crushed or anything probably the best way to go about it is just to use a quart jar or a similar type of feeder so what I'm gonna do here let's scoot this over let's see I think I've got it facing the wrong direction there we go 
and we are just going to invert this right there and so those bees are going to have access to that i'll need to plug these up really quick and uh, that'll be fine so again you got to be careful with feeding in cool temperatures there's a lot of people that tell you you can't do it in the 50s, shouldn't do it in the 40s. Moisture issues, moisture issues. I don't even put upper entrances in my colonies. It's all about cluster size and health to me. Are they healthy going in? Do they have a good cluster? I don't. We get tons of rain all winter long here. Uh, we're muddy almost constantly in winter, so we have plenty of moisture to go around. Plenty of rainfall. Upper entrances, I'm. I've toyed around with them. I've never seen any difference between colony performance with the upper entrance or without. It's all about cluster health, good queen, plenty of winter bees, plenty of nutrition, and, and dead mites. The great, mite, great queen's dead mites, good nutrition. Always come back to, to that somehow, but anyways, we're going to leave that on. This colony, it's, it's not, it's not going to be anything special. We're not going to be able to do anything but probably use that queen for another colony that may be a big production colony the queens just lackluster but we were toying around with it i got two of them to survive but nothing super special more like just banking queens for winter anyways if you have any questions about feeding bees during the winter there's variables you got to be careful i think this is the best way to do it those bees can get around that a little bit of syrup and warm it up i don't worry about it too much Healthy bees are going to do good. You, know, you can throw sugar bricks on colonies too, but they're not, they're not as good for bees as, as these things are. Uh, sugar syrup, that is. Anyways, opinions are like noses. We all have one. Hopefully, see you in the next video.